Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on fungi and let's move on to the fourth kingdom that is plantae. So in fungi what all did we discuss? We discussed that they are multicellular, they are heterotrophic and they, as far as their nutrition is concerned, they can be saprophytes, they can also be parasitic and they can also exist in symbiotic relationships with algae. Right? So with this, let us start with plantae. Now as the name suggests, plantae, so we are all sure that it is going to talk about plants. Now when you think of plants, it is not only the small rose plant which you potted in your house. There are so many varieties of plants which you come across. There are big trees, there are small shrubs, there are cactus. There are a variety of aquatic plants as well. If you go under the water in deep seas and all, you will see so many varieties of aquatic plants. There are huge tall pine trees on hilly areas. There are coconut trees on the seashore regions. So a variety of trees starting from grasses to tall big trees. Right? So th that's it. that itself is a very diverse group. So many different types of trees, plants, grasses fall under this plantain. So let us now look at the characteristics of this kingdom plant. Now till now our observation had been that as we rise up each kingdom we see more advanced features right so we started with monera where we had unicellular organisms which were prokaryotes then we came to protista where we had unicellular organisms but eukaryotes then we came to fungi which were multicellular and eukaryotes so similarly let us look at the characteristics of this kingdom plantae so they are again eukaryotes that is specific membrane bound cell organelles and distinct nucleus. They are also multicellular made up of many cells. They are autotrophic that is they can prepare their own food because all green plants generally have the green pigment called chlorophyll with the help of which they can prepare their own food in presence of sunlight. So they are autotrophic. They are immobile because you would have seen that plants are static. They do not move from one place to another. So they are immobile. Cell walls are present. Like fungi in case of plants also, cell walls are present. So these are some of the basic characteristics of all organisms belonging to this kingdom plantae. So now in this kingdom, we are we are talking about all types of plants and in the first slide you saw that there are so many different varieties of plants since there are too many varieties so we will have further classification of this kingdom that is we will have sub classification of the kingdom plant so again whenever we talk about classification or sub classification there has to be a basis of that classification there has to be some characteristics based on which we will classify them so let us look at the basis of sub classification of this kingdom plantae so the first basis is differentiation of plant body into tissues so what comes to your mind when you hear this term plant body? What do you mean by plant body? Plant body would include root, stem and leaves. These are basically, these three things constitute the basic of a plant. Root, stem and leaves. Right? So there are some plants which do not have any of them. Which do not have a root, which do not have a stem, which do not have a leaves. There are no distinction between any of these. There are some plants which have only a distinct root and leaves there are some plants which do which have only distinct leaves then there are some which have distinct root stem as well as leaves so this plant body differentiation also came, this differentiation had also come gradually so the plants which were like the oldest ones they did not have much body differentiation 
right so the, the way we talked about body organization in case of uh, those um, organisms and in case of animals similarly we are talking about plant body differentiation whether the body is distinctly divided into root stem or leaves or not so this was one basis of classification the other basis was ability to bear seeds whether the plant bear seeds or not seeds what are seeds Seeds basically help in reproduction in plants. We sow seeds, as I mentioned before also, we take a seed and we plant it in our home and we see that a plant comes up, right? So we sow seeds to get plants. But not all plants have the ability to bear seeds. So all plants do not bear seeds, right? For example, for your rose plant, you will see that the rose seeds are extremely small or tiny and so it is quite difficult to grow a rose plant from a rose seed. So generally people prefer to take a branch of the rose plant and plant it and then get a new tree, right? So these were some of the basis of subclassification of the plant kingdom. Whether the plant body is differentiated into root, stem and leaves or not, and the ability to bear seeds. So now let us see what were the different classes into which the plant kingdom were was classified. Okay, so there was another thing that was the type of seeds. Now let us suppose there are some plants which bear seeds, there are some plants which do not bear seeds. For those who bear seeds, then again they, they can either bear naked seeds or they can bear covered seeds. That means there will be something which will keep the seed enclosed and in another other case, the seeds will be in open. It will be a naked seed. So these were some of the basis upon which the subclassification was actually done. So let us look at the different groups into which the planting kingdom was further classified. So first, the first step of classification was based on the plant body differentiation. So plant body not differentiated, they are known as Thalophyta and the other one was those plants for which the plant body was differentiated. So what do I mean by plant body differentiated? That means differentiated into root, stem and leaves. Right? So these, the there was one group called Thalophyta in which there was no distinct root, no distinct stem, no distinct leaves. So they were known as thallophyta and there was another group in which there were there was distinct root stem and leaves now it was seen that these plants in which the plant body was well differentiated again there were a huge number of plants like that so they wanted to subclassify it again so these kind of plants were again subclassified into two types one was the plants without vascu vascular tissue. You know what is vascular tissue? We spoke about the vascular bundles while we were discussing the lesson on tissues. What is the purpose? That vascular bundles are nothing but the xylem and the phloem. So what is their function in the plant? They actually help in conduction. So the xylem will actually help to conduct water from the soil to the upwards of the plant and phloem will actually help in conducting the food and minerals from the leaves to the various parts of the plant. So basically vascular tissue helps in conduction in the plants. So it was seen that those plants which whose body were well differentiated into root, stem and leaves in that there were some kind of plants where the vascular tissue was present and there were some other kind of plants where the vascular tissue was not present. So those where the vascular tissue was not present were known as bryophyta and the other one was with vascular tissue. So again it was seen that the plants with vascular tissue they are again huge in number. And that too, not only huge in number, but they, they again have so many dissimilarities amongst themselves. So again, they were further classified based on whether they have the capability to bear seeds or not. So those plants for which seeds are not produced or they do not bear seeds were known as pteridophyta. So here P is silent when we pronounce it. So they are known as pteridophyta. And those plants which bear seeds were known as phanerogams. So I'm sure that the names might be quite new and difficult for you. But as we discuss about each of these plants, I'll tell you the meaning of their names so that it becomes easier for you to remember them. 
Now again, the plants which produce seeds, it was found that there were two different types of seeds which were getting produced. Some of them produced uncovered or naked seeds, whereas others produced covered seeds. So based on that, they were again classified on, into two types. Those which produced naked seeds were known as gymnosperms and those producing covered seeds were known as angiosperms. And now again, those producing covered seeds were again classified into two types, dicots and monocots. What was dicots? Dicots were those which, which had two cotyledons inside the covered seed. So inside the covered seed also, there were some leaf-like structure called cotyledons. So those which had two cotyledons were known as dicots. Those which had one cotyledon were known as monocots. So this screen actually tells us the subclassification of the kingdom plantae. Now we are going to discuss about each of these types in detail. So let us look at the hierarchy. So the hierarchy will tell us which plants came first and then with passage of time gradually more advanced plants came into being. So the oldest form in plants were the thallophyta that means the ones which did not have distinct leaves, stem and roots. Then came the bryophyta that is those which had which actually had distinct stem, leaves and roots, but they did not have the vascular tissue. Then came up the pteridophyta, which had distinct stem, leaves and roots and also had vascular tissues, but they do not bear seeds. Then came phanerogams, which could bear seeds as well. Then gymnosperms, angiosperms, that way you see that when we reach till angiosperms it is like they they bear seeds that that too they are covered seeds and also they have uh, the vascular tissue they also have the plant body well differentiated right so in angiosperms you have all the features right so gradually with passage of time we see that more advanced or more complexity have happened in the structure of the plants as well correct thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.